how Google process search request over petabytes of data in just milliseconds, why scalable algorithms are important, what you should know to become a senior engineer. Let's find out in today's episode of Daily Challenge. Lead Code Challenge, Day 3, Maximum Sabaray. Let's start with observing the problem. Given an integer array numbers, find the continuous subarray containing at least one number which has the largest sum and return the sum. So we have numbers and uh, some part of this array results to number six, which is the largest subarray in this array. On first thought, it looks like it's super easy problem. There is nothing special in it, but it only before we go to follow up. In follow up, it required to solve this problem with divide and conquer approach. What does it mean? We will find out later. We will cut this solution in two languages. The first will be Swift, uh, which is used for Apple development. And second, optimal one, and uh, not optimal one, but divide and concur will be in C++. If you understand the problem itself, try to solve it in any way, not exactly divide and concur or ON or whatever else, just try it to solve. And after this, Let's go and watch. So uh, we will starting with uh, saving the first item of array uh, in uh, chain and save it as a maximum value as for now. And then let's start from the second value. The second value uh, one uh, it replaces our chain and it's greater than minus one, so our cu current maximum is one. We expanding our window uh, and uh, our chain become minus two beca because one plus minus three is minus two. Uh, we saving to our chain either uh, sum of current chain plus current number, either only or current number. So the next number is 4 and 4 become our chain because we are not interested in negative numbers because 4 is greater than sum with anything else. So our maximum value now is 4. When we go to, to expanding our window, now our chain is 3. 3 is lower than 4 so we don't modify our maximum. But when we go, when we expanding further, we see that the chain become five. Five is greater. We do the same operation. It becomes six. Maximum becomes six. We expand it further. In this case, uh, chain become lower. So we are not interested to um, make our chain larger. And again, it's not changed. So the answer is six. Let's start with the divide and concur approach. From the name itself, it's easy to understand that it have at least two parts, divide and concur. So we will start with dividing. Uh, we will divide um, our array uh, into subarrays. We will split it by two every time. Uh, in this uh, animation, I show a bit less steps just to be it easier to understand. So uh, we split array in the end into a lot of very small parts, which is just one number. 
The next step will be to transform every number to something with what we want to work. We want to work with uh, some range. So we will represent this range like, like this, this is line and we have right part, we have left part and we have an additional some maximum number and sum of the whole part. So uh, as for example, uh, the largest pa part have a maximum of six. So for example, so let, let, let's go and see how it will looks like. So every number become it left part, right part, itself maximum, itself sum. So we just transform it from one to this like matrix where every, every number is the same. So the next step, we just transform it to something. Let's understand what will be our next step. Next step will be concur. So we have a lot of small parts and we want to concur them. Let's start with just two of them, minus two and one. So we need to summarize these two parts to join them which, with each other with the next approach. Uh, to calculate left part, we will need to get maximum of left part of first item or sum of uh, sum of left uh, of first item uh, and uh, left item on uh, left part of second item to calculate a right part we do the same operation but uh, vice versa we either taking uh, the right part of second value or uh, second part either we take sum uh, of right part of first item and sum of second item which is greater so to calculate max we have up to three values uh, we either taking a max value of first item either we taking max value of second item either we joining right part of first item and left part of second item to calculate the sum is pretty easy we just summarize sum of left item of first item at and second item so our final result on your screens right now uh, left part minus one right part one maximum is one which is on right part and uh, sum minus one so we have this calculation let's uh, continue with what we had previously we will apply the same operation for every pair and for last items since it doesn't have pair we just move it move move, move them so and we are repeating this operation a lot of times until we reach only one item so how how does it change anything with the previous approach why we need to make it so complicated why how it helps Google or any other big company to calculate things faster than anyone else. Every block on this screen might be a separate server. So you can distribute your data to thousands of servers, to millions of servers, to whatever you need, and then aggregate data to just one server. So you can take petabyte of data, split it across 1000 machines ask every machine to process only a small part of this data then <coughs> connect results of this data to like to one machine in the end since 
on every step when you can query, you getting less data. So right now we have only two parts of data and after our last step we got only one item and this item have our answer which is maximum which is six why scalable algorithms are important so without scalable algorithms you will not be able to achieve same results as big companies can achieve because if you will calculate everything on just one computer you will very fast go to limits of this computer but if you have scalable algorithm you can use as many computers as you want or you can use supercomputer or whatever else because it's scalable it's easy to scale you can add as many machines as you want and it will serve your purpose and that's exactly the thing that you should know when you becoming senior software engineer because you will use it very often at least in big companies i hope you had learned something new today if so please set like and subscribe it's very important for me to continue creating this type of content a creation of this video took much longer than i expected because it's every time all these problems looks very simple but it leads to very deep things that originally use it everywhere not like everywhere of course but like when you're building something big uh, something scalable these things appear thank you for watching and have a nice day